Joining me now is president of the Galen Institute, Grace Marie Turner. Grace Marie, good to see you again. Hello, Liz. Nice to see you. All right. Uh, advocates, like I said in the introduction, advocates of this bill call it an advancement of justice. Governor Brown's saying that it's a human right. Healthcare is a human right. Uh, is it an advancement of justice, Grace Marie? Now, I think one of the things we really have to think about, Liz, is what this means for those who are here legally, both citizens and legal immigrants, and their access to care. First of all, they're saying right now that the people who sign up, the illegal immigrants, who sign up for coverage under the exchange will not be eligible for subsidies. That's how they're getting the foot in the door. You know that the next request is going to be to subsidize that coverage because it's going to be very expensive. It's hard to find a policy on the exchange that costs less than about $500 a month, $6,000 a year, and most of those policies have big deductibles of five to $6,000. That's going to be, that's very, afford, very difficult for people to afford now, and it's going to make it even more difficult for people who have lower incomes to afford that coverage. So just be ready, because the next thing they're going to do is say they need to subsidize this coverage. But at the same time, these people are going to be competing with people in the United States here legally for the same physicians and hospitals to get care. I had somebody write to me, a father, who said, do they not understand that when they add millions more people, in this case in California, hundreds of thousands more people, to the exchanges and to Medicaid, it makes it so much more difficult for people who don't have other options to get care. So I, I, it's going to likely crowd out coverage and access to care for people who are here legally, and it is going to cost more money over the long time, term as they begin to ask for subsidies for undocumented immigrants. And President Obama, when this law was being passed, one of the absolute promises he made to the American people was that this would not provide coverage for illegal immigrants. California is going to be the first right. in line to request a waiver to cover them, but you can be sure many more are going to follow. Right, and Grace Murray, correct me if I'm wrong here, but part of Obamacare written into the law makes it illegal to provide those subsidies. So it's not something that could just be changed by one state, by California saying it's okay. That, ha that would have to be changed at the federal level by an act of Congress signed by the president, correct? Exactly right. That's right. And it's very unlikely that, that that would happen because, A, there as I, there are many people who can't afford coverage now who are, who are eligible for it but are here legally, but this would make it even more difficult for people to, um, this just not going to get through to be able to subsidize illegal immigrants through federal subsidies. But the state could do it. So yes, you'd have to have a, a, literally an act of Congress to provide subsidies through the exchanges for illegal immigrants. But that doesn't stop California from providing some sort of a stipend so that the state's taxpayers would pay for it. Right. Is this a loophole then, the first step to uh, going back, walking back that promise that President Obama made without making it appear as if he's breaking a promise? Is this the loophole that they've been waiting for? Because it sounds like when you present this, it sounds like they're saying illegal immigrants would have to pay for this with their own money. This isn't something that would cost any more to the state or the federal government. They won't be eligible for subsidies, yet they're packaging it like that. So the next step is saying, well, it makes no sense if they're eligible, if they can't pay for it. What are we going to do now? They would have to subsidize it. And whether or not it would be through the state subsidizing it or whether or not it would be through changes in federal law, and I pres presume if the same people who controlled the Congress and the White House when this law was passed, they would have a much more favorable audience for covering illegal immigrants and they wouldn't therefore have to worry about the President Obama's promise because by then he would be out of office. But this is again, Liz, a request, this is legislation authorizing the government to request, a, the governor to request a waiver to allow coverage of illegal immigrants. That would still have to be granted by Washington, but I have heard nothing in Washington that says, no, 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 don't pass that law because we'd never cover it. Clearly, there's an encouragement to cover as many people as possible under this law because it draws more people into government-subsidized health insurance, dependency, and the kinds of, of 
control that many of us object to, centralized control over health benefits. Right, right. Clear, clearly, it's stage one of a stage two process. Of a, a stage two process, yes. then there's something else coming, and it's a little misleading. Then, if this is all the case, it's a little misleading uh, to say to claim that this will cost nothing to the state and the federal government. That's one of the main arguments that they're making, but that's that can't be the case because if if illegal immigrants don't have the money to pay taxes, which most of them do not pay taxes, they're not going to have the money individually to pay for these high health care premiums, let alone the deductibles to even reach the premiums. Uh, and they're going to have to look to government for that. And that's going to fall again back on the California taxpayer. That's exactly right. So this is really a foot in the door. And I've actually heard liberals say that. We just get them in and on the exchanges. Then the next step will be to ask for subsidies to cover their care. But we have to think of vulnerable Americans who cannot now find a physician under these, these bare bones policies who will see them. And as a result, it's going to make it more difficult for those here legally to be able to get access to care and to coverage because of covering people who are not here legally. Seems to me that we have right. to first think about what are the priorities of this law. Right, so that would have an enormous impact on uh, Americans, particularly those in California, because that's the state we're talking about, but not just economically, but in our personal lives, our quality of care will diminish as well as our paycheck diminishing. Right.